UIKit offers a variety of ways to set up the images in row 5 of the template. I've set this row up with a grid that uses an unordered list to display four images across on large devices, two across on medium, and a single image per row on smalls. Remember that the UL tag defines the row and the list items make up the columns. I've used the data UK grid margin attribute to add vertical spacing between the images when they stack. I have an image in each list item. These are the latest work images that came with the template. This looks nice at the large width. When I resize to the medium and the small, it would be nice to have the images centered in their columns. UIKit provides a class called UK Align Center that I can use to center those images. Also, I'll give them a little styling with the UK Thumbnail class. The thumbnail styling is so faint I can barely see it at all. You can copy the code for the thumbnail styling from the browser inspect tool or the unminified CSS file. You can use that same technique when you want to modify any of the UI kit styles. For the thumbnails, I increased the padding a little and I made the border a little bit darker color. Now you can see those thumbnails defined a little better. There is a UK border rounded style that applies a radius to give us rounded edges on the image. The default style is very small. It's a five pixel radius. So once again, you can override that style by adding it to your custom CSS file. I've increased the radius from five to 15 pixels. And there you see more of a rounded edge there. There's also a circle class. I'll change one of these from rounded to circle. You need a square image to make it truly circular. Since these are rectangular images, they turn out to be oval instead. I'll change this image to one I created that actually is a square. And we'll see how that looks with the circle class applied. There we go. Nice and round. UIKit's overlay is a nice, easy to use hover effect that's built right into the framework. Here are four different variations of overlay. There's a simple text overlay, the text overlay with a background, an animation added to the overlay, and an image rollover. Let's take a look at how to create those effects. I've added four more list items to create a second line of images within the same UI kit row. So this is my row definition here and the first four items. Now I've added four more to create a second line of images. The easiest way to set up an overlay is to use a figure element. You add the UK overlay class to the figure if you want the overlay content displayed only when the image is hovered, you add a UK overlay hover class as well. If you don't use that hover class, then the overlay content is always displayed. So there's our image. I'm still using the UK thumbnail. That works fine in this case. The fig caption element is where you place the text that will form the overlay. And that gets a class of UK Overlay Panel. 
For now, I have these all the same. I'll change each as I go down the list so they'll all appear the same. The text isn't very visible, but as you know by now, you can always change those styles. So I have a style rule for a fig caption with a class of UK overlay panel. And I'm increasing the font size and the line height and I'm adding a text shadow to make that all more visible. Now we see the larger text and a bit of a shadow there to define it. If you'd like a background for the text, add the class UK Overlay Background. With that class by itself, the background covers the entire image, but you have class options to position it. Here I've added a UK overlay top. You have these four options, although what should be a left and right displays as entire image for me on Google Chrome and Firefox, but the top and bottom work correctly. So let's see what the top looks like. So that is on a hover there. So we have the text using that same styling from the style rule I added previously, and then we have the background. I'll remove the hover style and then you can see it's just a constant on. I set this back to the hover. You can see there's no transition there. It just appears immediately on hover. In the next example, I'll show you how to add a transition effect. So I have a background for the overlay. I have the overlay displaying at the bottom and then you add a class for the transition effect. I'm adding a slide bottom, slide up from the bottom. And here in a comment, I have the different options that you can use for the animation effects. So there we see that slide up effect. And the last example will be an image rollover. This is set up with a figure as well. But rather than using the fig caption, you add the rollover image after the initial image. So it still gets the overlay panel, add a UK overlay image class. The UK thumbnail is optional. And these can also take those same transition effects. I'm adding a scale transition here. So we get a rollover image and it's scaling up as it appears. I'll change this so we can see a different transition. I'll change this to slide top. This code shows how you can add a link that works with an overlay. You need to add the UK position cover class so the user can click anywhere on the image. And there we see the image sliding down from the top. For this row, I've used an unordered list to create the grid. You can do the same thing with the divs. And below that row, it's commented out, but I have the code there to show how you would do the same thing using divs instead of the list.